name is David Stanwood. I am the president of Stanwood Piano Innovations. Our shop is on Martha's Vineyard in the town of West Tisbury. I've always had a passion for pianos. I've always loved pianos. David Stanwood's passion for pianos led him to question why even on some of the world's best instruments, the feel of the keyboard was sometimes inconsistent from note to note. While training to be a piano technician at Boston's North Bennett Street School, Mr. Stanwood asked what could be done to improve pianos whose actions didn't feel right. And the answer was, uh, well, uh, that's, oh, that's not easy. So I, I, there really wasn't an answer. That drove me to experiment and to discover. The science of weights and measures is called metrology. Mr. Stanwood's quest led him to develop a fundamental system and methodology for balancing piano action, something he called the new touch weight metrology. What was missing in pianos was uh, a metrology which explains the balance of piano actions in a whole way. Unlike a violinist who can carry his or her own instrument on tour, the concert pianist must travel from hall to hall playing on a variety of instruments, often with inconsistent playing action. The quality of the mechanism of the piano can either act to support the pianist or can act as a barrier to their art. And my quest has been to discover, you know, what is the mystery in that mechanic of the keyboard? What happens between, you know, the musical thought and the finger where it touches the key? and the sound that comes out. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in this mechanism. Mm -hmm. And that really shouldn't be an issue for the pianist. They should have a thought and they should be able to think it and be able to express it in sound. The piano keyboard is a system of stepped weights. The hammers at the bass end are larger and heavier than the hammers at the treble end. The pianist expects the keys to feel consistent along the length of the keyboard much as we expect each of the steps in a staircase to be of the same depth and height. Now a pianist has the task not only to walk up and down the staircase, but they have to dance up and down the staircase and, and do it artistically and do all these fancy things. The action for each of a piano's 88 keys acts in a series of movements much like a catapult, where the press of a key begins a rapid series of increasingly magnified movements through the key stick, the repetition or whippin, and the shank eventually catapulting the felt-tipped hammer into the string. Engineers refer to this set of connected mechanisms as a folded beam. Now here we have the analogy of the piano action, which pivots, the main pivot is on the balance of the key. The hammer, the, the finger goes down a little bit and the hammer goes up a lot. We have the same analogy, the same pivot point, this goes down a little and that goes up a lot. Using one gram blocks to illustrate the balance beam analogy, Mr. Stanwood first weighs the hammer and shank mechanism, a measurement called the strike weight. And 10 grams out on the end, this would be the measurement of the, the weight of the hammer. And the way we would measure this in the piano would be by taking the part off. and actually tipping it. And there we have 10.2 uh, grams. The process of weighing each component of each of the 88 key mechanisms continues with the whippin, also known as the repetition, and is followed by the key stick, which is weighed by balancing it at its pivot point. This measurement is called the front weight. We've measured the strike weight, and that's the weight out here. Okay. We've measured the whip and radius weight. We've measured how far it is by measuring the ratio, putting the 10 gram weight, seeing how it translates. We've measured the, uh, the front weight by tipping the key on the scale. That would be this weight. Okay. We've measured the balance weight by measuring up weight, down weight, and averaging them, finding the midpoint, that would be this weight. So we have an equation here that has one, two, three, four, five, six variables. We've measured everything except one, and that's how far out, and that's the ratio. Mr. Stanwood's equation of balance is written as 
balance weight plus front weight equals whip and weight times the key ratio plus the strike weight times the strike ratio. For the key mechanism measured here, the formula would be 38 grams plus 27.1 grams equals 18 grams times 0.5 plus 10.2 grams times 5.5. The primary use of the equation of balance is to fine tune and perfect the front weight, the variable that makes the key invisible to the player. All of the data collected in the weighing of each part of each of the 88 keys is then entered into the computer. The data is then analyzed to determine whether individual components should be made lighter by trimming or made heavier by having weights strategically placed to achieve balance. Now we're going to look at the Jordan Hall piano. This is the Steinway, Hamburg Steinway D. It's a Jordan Hall. And this was the weight of the strike weight as from the factory. And you can see that there's a big bump where it gets very low here. This is the ratio that we calculated using the equation of balance. The next major component is the lead weight, and that's what you have to throw when you play the key. And that can be measured by measuring the front weight, where you tip the key on the scale. Here's the measurement of front weight. We added uh, what's called a whip and support spring. So we use a combination of lead weight and the spring, and you can see that the effect is that we can use much less lead. So now we have a keyboard where the inertial weights, the stepped weights, are very uniform from step to step. No surprises. The ultimate goal in a piano action is to really make the mechanism disappear and have the hammers in your fingers. I mean, that would be the ultimate goal, is to just not even think about the fact that there's 5,000 parts in between you and your performance. You can just feel like you're like right direct connected to the hammer, and that's what we're after here.